Well, I'll tell you, Kirit, the planning that we did for this, instead of going headlong into the prepared IED belts on the outskirts of the city, we did a hell of a lot of assaults into specifically selected objectives interior to the city to bypass those and take the key locations within the city in order to gain control. And then we will clear from the inside out, effectively bypassing most of that IED belt that lies around the outside of the city. Got it. So why did you... The going so far has been... Go ahead. Go ahead, Kira. So far, the going has been very smooth. The units are moving very slowly and deliberately and have had a great deal of success against the IEDs. I believe there's only been two strikes with no casualties against vehicles. But the very judicious use of fires, both aviation delivered and surface delivered fires, has been something that has been key to our planning since the beginning. Reinforcing that down to the individual Marine level, both with his rifle and the use of cannon artillery, of course, and aviation delivered fires. And Colonel, explain to our viewers here in the States the importance of taking down this area. This has been a very influential Taliban stronghold. They've got a relationship with the farmers there that run those poppy fields. Drug trafficking is a huge problem, raises a lot of money for the bad guys. Well, it certainly does. And Marja right now, certainly within the Marine Corps area of operations in Helmand Province, is the last bastion of Taliban stronghold and really the key to us securing the entire Helmand River Valley area. A lot of our analysis shows that with regard to the opium and the poppy trade in Marja, which has been in years past a very large part of their agricultural crop, the farmers there have been hedging their bets, planting and top dressing a lot of their wheat and largely kind of waiting on the opium to kind of see what became of this operation and investing mostly in the wheat crop and other alternative crops. And we know you've been training those Afghan forces. It's a big reason for the troop surge so you guys can come home and the Afghan people can take over their country to security. How have they been helping you in this offensive? What have they been able to offer you guys culturally, militarily? Well, I'll tell you, Kira, this has probably been the largest scale integration and partnering with the Afghan army and police forces thus far, certainly since the Marine Corps has been here in Afghanistan. In the weeks preceding the operation, we brought two Marine infantry battalions here along with three Afghan Kandaks where they lived together, trained together, ate together for almost a month prior to doing the operation. And they were partnered. Every Marine company was with an Afghan company and they heloed in together on D-Day. They've been partnered since the start. So it's been a very strong partnership. They've worked together hand in hand since both the Afghan units have come here to Camp Dwyer and the Marine units arrived in from the States. Regional Combat Team 7, Lieutenant Colonel Mark Dietz will continue to follow the offensive. Mark, thanks so much.